I'll be y'all want to say total about for keeping us alive. Total about for this night. I want to say total about for all the things that you have blessed us on this earth thus far. I'll be asked that we will never be ungrateful for any of the things that you have blessed us with. And I'll be also asked that you forgive us for our sins and the mistakes. Forgive us for the times where we missed the mark. I ask that you can have mercy upon us. Give us a chance to repent. Give us a chance to be better. And I'll be also asked that you forgive the sins of our ancestors and those who are before us. Also forgive our iniquity and our transgressions. And I'll be asked as we go into the study, I ask that you can bless us with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, not only of your written word, but also of your voice. And I'll be asked that you give us the wisdom to identify what is righteous and what is unrighteous, and what is clean and what is unclean. Ask that you give us a heart that can hear, also a heart that can discern. And I'll be asked that you can strengthen all those who may be weak in the faith, and also those who may be afflicted in their flesh, whether it be injury or sickness. For we know that you are Elohim that can deliver, you are also Elohim that can heal. And I ask that you can have mercy upon us and strengthen us in the areas that we are weak. And I be also ask that you give us the wisdom to pray without ceasing. And I ask that the lack of faith or doubt will not creep into our minds or our heart, our lead. But I ask that as we pray to you, I ask that we can have confidence in you. And I ask that we can believe that you will answer our prayers if we do what is required of us. And I'll be asked that you can touch the hearts of every brother and sister on this call. You know it's not on this call. And I ask that you can bless it, bless us with the desires of our hearts as we continue to seek you. And I'll be asked that none of us will go backwards in this walk, but I ask that we won't go forward. And I ask as we go into the study, you can reveal more of yourself unto us as we continue to seek you. Bless you are Yahweh, bless is your name, Yahweh. And bless he that comes in the name of Yahweh. Hashem, Yahuwah, amen, amen, so. Hallelujah, <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. All right, Mr. Bakai, I'm going to uh, kind of set the uh, stage for the night. We're going to do this one a little bit different. Um, uh, a lot of times uh, we start off, we ask questions, and, you know, sometimes y'all leave us hanging and we feel like we be on by ourselves. So tonight, me and Mori Dawu, we're going to be quiet more so till the end you know we're gonna let y'all do most of the talking tonight but uh we're gonna do a lot of reading tonight and one thing we used to do many years ago at the Knesset was the sisters would have studies and they would read about uh certain women in the text and then they you know whether the negative or the positive um in the scripture they would have a discussion about the woman that they was reading about or several women that they was reading about in the text and a lot of times in our community we are all Torah bound and we consider ourselves to be Torah sound, but are we actually looking at the Ruach of the Torah that the Most High wants us to, to walk in? So a lot of times for us to see what the Ruach of the Torah actually looks like, we actually need to go back to look at our righteous forefathers and mothers and compare ourselves and our lives to them. Like, am I really a person that follows the Most High like Abraham or Moshe? Uh, or do I look like a modern Hebrew Israelite, you know, on the feminist side, vice versa? And so to start seeing our character attributes and what it is to be a true Ish Elohim or Isha Kail or virtuous woman, we need to look at the, uh, the scripts uh, to actually have a comparison to go to. So uh, a few weeks back, you know, we was in the book of uh, Esther, which I'll be coming back to tonight. And we was focusing on um, Vashti, the comparison between Vashti or Vashti and Hadassah, commonly called Esther. And showing the, the, the righteousness of Esther, the humility of Esther, or Hadassah, which is how she became uh, the king's Isha, and how Vashti of Vashti, in her rebellion to the king's uh, request and the way she handled some things, you know, the king sought counsel from his other leaders and asked them what should he do. And therefore, we've covered that part of the text. So tonight, uh, I want to focus on a couple of more people, which uh, Hadassah, commonly called Esther, will be one of them, as well as Zeresh. And everybody may not know Zeresh at the moment, but we will be getting to Zeresh and, you know, looking at the comparison within that. So uh, we're going to read stuff. So just notate, mark down the points that you want to bring out, because we're going to want to open the floor to you all first. So before we start with Hadassah or the reading of Esther, 
I'll be reading the book of Mishli or Proverbs, chapter 14 and one. It says, uh, every wise woman built of her house, but the foolish pluck of it down with her hands. So we've already covered about Vashti um, and then we've seen Hadassah. So now we're gonna move forward in the reading of the book of Esther. And y'all please notate your points. If there's really no trick questions. I just want us to have a discussion tonight on what do you see that's in this text as many points as we can bring out from the floor and then me and Maury Dawood to save our comments to the end to let y'all bring it out. So if y'all don't participate, it'll be really solid tonight, okay? So uh, so we need y'all participation tonight after we read and, and we will participate with you all um, uh, at the end after we let y'all make y'all statements, okay? Because a lot of times, you know, when, when going into the word, it's always listening to someone else present and you know the teaching when sometimes it's already written in the script and you call, you all can bring points out and we can have a, a good discussion so uh let's just kind of have a discussion as to what you're getting so notate some points as we go forward panakia if you would start with a book of hadassah or esther um chapter three and we're gonna be jumping around just a little esther three and one just to read to the thought esther three and one panakia Esther 3, starting at verse 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why transgress you the king's commandment? Now it, came to, now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand. For he had told him that he was Yaudi. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then was Haman full of wrath. And he, th and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is first, the, the month Nisan, in the 12th year of King Ahasuerus, it cast pure, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day and month to month to the twelfth month, that is, the month of the dark. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. Okay, so pause it for a second. So we just started here just to build to the point of what's going on during this time period. We now know that Hadassah is now the king's new uh, new Isha. And we now know that Haman has an issue with Mordecai. Um, so I just want to establish that. So he wanted all, uh, all the Yahudim put to death. He presented the king uh, with a proposition or not necessarily a proposition. He let him know, hey, you have this, this one man who refuses to bow um, they, they have different laws than what we have. They do not respect your laws. So they want to try to turn the king against them to allow, to get the king to allow him to put them to death. All right. So I just came here to build uh, where we're starting from. Jump to chapter four and one. Just wanted us to go there first. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice, a loud and bitter cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter in to the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing. 
and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Amon had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for the, her people. And Atak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hatak and gave him command, commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come to the king into the inner court who is not called, there is but one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not with yourself that you shall escape in the king's house more than all Jews. For if you all together hold your peace at this time, then there shall, en then there shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Continue on, five on. All right, Esther five and one. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court, the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in his royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, what will you, Queen Esther? And what is your request? It shall be even given you to the half of the kingdom. And Esther said, if it seemed good unto the king, let the king and Haman Come this day unto the banquet that I prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther have said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is your petition? And it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of the kingdom, it shall be performed. Then answer Esther and said, My petition and my request is, if I found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleased the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Hamad come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king have said. Then went Hamad forth that day joyful and glad, with a glad heart. But when Hamad saw that Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself. And when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh's wife. And Haman told of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had, prom had promoted him, how he had advanced him above all the princes and servants of the king. 
Kamon said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen, they let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high, and tomorrow speak you unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go you and merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Okay, let's pause it for a moment. So uh, thus far, Mishpachai, um, if y'all would uh, give me some highlights that you're seeing. Um, uh, and for the Akim, you know, focus on some of Mordecai's attributes um, and what he's doing. And uh, Akio, um, you know, focus on uh, uh, Hadassah. Or oh, and, and 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 collectively, y'all can speak on both points, both ways. But I don't want to leave Mordecai out for the brothers to forget about Mordecai as well. But what are we seeing here um, in reference to uh, uh, Ish Elohim and uh, uh, Isha Kail or virtuous woman? Um, and also focus on you know Zeresh and Mord uh, 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 and Haman's friends. So I now open the floor, Mr. Kyle. What's something that we're seeing thus far? Okay, Akoti Rose. Shalom, family. Man, I'm I'm just laughing because I literally just read this book today. And um, the first thing I saw, well, from what we just read, um, how Mordecai checked as Hadassah when she was like making excuses. But I think um, even from like the beginning of the book, how she was groomed into the position from a child, um, you know, being under Mordecai's care and she, everything that she learned from him, she implemented it even in the courting process, which caused her to stand out with the king and even um, the king's, um, what it, what was he the person in the in the kingdom that was grooming her and everything that they taught her she took it um she applied it as well which again gave her favor with the king and when Mordecai spoke to her um through the servant she wasn't prideful she took heed to the to the um warning that Mordecai gave her and she went into fasting and she called the fast with her people and she was in a position to intercede for her people. And that gave her courage to go before the king, even though she knew that her life could possibly be on the line. She didn't love her life more than her people. And because the Most High saw that that was her heart posture, again, she got favor from the king. That's what I got from what we just read so far. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, uh, great presentation, great presentation. Hallelujah. All right, Mr. Bakai, uh, the floor is still open. Iman Lukert. Hello. I just want to add to that what she was saying also that uh, she, uh, when she got ready to go before the king, she didn't go halfway looking like, um, oh, excuse me, I won't I say what I want to say, like some of us would go out, some of our people would go out in the street, but she put on her best, her royalty, her garments and stuff, and got herself looking real good before she went to the king. And I thought that was real nice of her. She didn't go to the king any kind of way. Oh, yeah. All right. So Ema said she didn't go to the king any kind of way. She got herself real royal before she went to the king. All right. Hallelujah. All right. The floor is still open, Mr. McCarr.
And it's open to Aki and Wa Akio, to both brothers and sisters. The floor is open. All right, Ima Shoshana. I'm chopping on those two comments. Also, how she used wisdom in <laughs> inviting Hammond to the um, to the invite with the invitation with her um, with the king, setting him up. I love the wisdom of that, and how she didn't do it on the first day of the uh, of them coming together, just to really get the. Uh, Hammond all souped up to think that he was really, oh, this, this is great. I'm somebody, I'm, I'm higher than the king's sons and all that, you know? And um, just so she can get his mind off of not even thinking on about the um, Yahudim. So, and um, knowing that uh, raised by Mordecai, she took heed to the teachings and you could see she implemented it in her, her lifestyle, what she did, how she did it, and how she presented herself. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great points, Ima. I'm going to yield to uh, Koti Rose. Um, as far as Haman's wife, um, she was just like her husband. She was seeking a position. She was seeking like a high power. So she never spoke any type of wisdom into him. She just went along with everything that he was saying, which also showed her her heart concerning everything else. Even like, I don't know if we got to the last um, verse where she told him basically how to dig his own grave that he was going to be buried in. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is there anyone else? All right, even when, even when I tried to let y'all know we was going to go last, we still ain't getting much participation except from the Emas and Akoti Rose. Thank, thank y'all for sharing. Any, I can y'all have any points before me and Maury will make any, any statements before going forward? Does anyone else have anything? All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, building upon the comments that was already made. So those are some very good statements that um, the Emas and Akoti Rose brought out and uh, I love the way uh, Akoti Rose brought out what she brought out, you know, because she read the text as we all read the text. And she presented exactly what she seen according to what the text says. So she was able to see the behaviors of Esther. She was able to see the behaviors of, of, of Esther, I mean, uh, Zeresh. She was able to see the wisdom as Ima, uh, the Ima spoke about the wisdom of, uh, of Esther, as did... Uh, Akoti Rose spoke about the wisdom of Esther and Akoti Rose just also spoke about the desires or the foolishness of Zeresh and how she also just encouraged her Ish down a foolish path. Because as we read the text, you've already said how high you've been raised to. You even said how the king's wife, the queen invited you and just you and everybody else, but you just can't even enjoy yourself in your position because Mordecai is there, I mean, I'm still not going to enjoy myself. And so instead of the wife giving him counsel, like, hey, just chill out for a minute each, like, look, you just been promoted. You've been raised to a high authority. Don't let that mess your day up. You've been invited along with the king by the king's wife. Don't go crash the party. Don't go start no fight. Don't go wild out. She basically told him to go wild out. Instead of just saying, enjoy your position, enjoy your time, and let whoever they worship work this situation out between you and Mordecai, she didn't give him any wisdom like that. She encouraged him in his father, right? So now going back to what uh, Ima um, Shoshana Nakoti Rose was talking about, uh, and you hear Ima Newkirk said on a regular basis how she was raised, meaning I'm speaking about Ima Newkirk when she says how she was raised by her Ima, by her mother, and certain things that was in her just from being trained up. Both uh, Akoti Rose and Ima Shoshana focused on Esther and how Esther had a proper upbringing under Mordecai. And so now she is now remembering because these things are in her. They were in her. She was trained up, uh, a, a woman of the most high, 
by a man or each of the most high that gave her good training, gave her a good covering, gave her a positive example, a positive household to live in. And one thing that I, I want to focus on is he helped her establish also a relationship with Yah. And I mean no offense by this at all. A lot of times uh, people do, do not always have a relationship with the Most High for themselves. Sometimes people have a relationship with the Most High based upon their Ish or vice versa, based upon their Isha. But both should have a relationship with the Most High for themselves. And her upbringing shows that she had a relationship with the Most High also because it shows how she fasted to the Most High. She listened to the counsel of Mordecai. And even though her life could have been on the line, she totally trusted on the Most High. She trusted on the fact that I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to tell everybody else to fast and pray. We see how she fought spiritual battle. She fought spiritual battle as a praying woman, as a fasting woman, as a woman that was trained up in these customs. Also being trained up. She didn't fight it loud mouth. Riotous. As Ima Shoshana said, she used wisdom. As Ima uh, Newkirk said, she put on her royal garment to go present herself before her ish. Well, let me catch his attention. Let me do myself up. Let me be uh, the queen that he loves. Let me present myself before him properly as a queen, as a lady, speaking to him in a tone of voice as a woman, as a lady, and even Haman that means her people harm. She never wants to say, oh, you want to kill my people? Oh, I ain't gonna have that. I'm gonna tell the king to deal with you. She didn't deal with Haman like that. As Iman Shoshana said, she used wisdom. She brought a Haman right on up. She used Kokma. She used wisdom. She used the power of submission that the Most High gives to a woman, but she used righteous wisdom, righteous submission that in turn activated the power of Yah in her life through her Ish because she did the obedient things that a Kayil, Isha Kayil, or virtuous uh, woman should utilize. So because she was trained up, but if, if these things aren't instilled in us, men and women alike, to know the creator, to know our culture, to know our heritage, and how we are to walk, then we won't be able to be good Ish Elohim or Isha Kayil, a virtuous woman. We have to look at the text as to the forefathers and mothers of old as to how did they conduct themselves how did they fight their spiritual battles or their physical battles? How did they handle their marital issues? How did they do any of these things? And as I covered already, this gift study is not just for husband and wives, it's for men and women, because the, the difference in a, a husband and a man is not really any different. This, the only difference is if a man is not married yet, he's not yet a husband, but he's still an Ish and he should be an Ish Elohim. So all Ish Elohim at some point will be married they need to be able to see other Ish Elohim in the text so we know how to be ready to be an Ish. The difference between a, a, a married woman and a non-married woman, they should all be striving to be a Kayil, a virtuous woman. So the difference will be one may be married, one is not married, but the goal is to be married. So therefore to be married, they need to know how was our foremothers? How were they as a wife? What was their character conduct? How did they treat their Ish? How do they treat their husband? How do they speak? How do they dress? How do they act? How do they fast? How do they pray? This is what we can look to so that when the time presents us to be a husband or a wife, we would have already looked at the patterns that the Most High has in the scriptures to show before Esther was a wife, she was already a virtuous woman, which made her selected out of all beautiful women in that land of the different nations that was there, of all the virgins, she was the one that the king chose because she was a virtuous woman of Yah first and was selected to be the wife of a king, which made her a queen, which set her in a powerful place, a seat of authority, okay? So when we're looking at this, um, the wisdom that she used, um, it came from her training once again. And I mean, no offense, but how are our women trained today? Are they trained to be virtuous? No. This is something that when we're returning to the culture that we have to teach how to be virtuous. Now, some, I, I'm, anytime we make any statement, we're not saying all, but we do know that uh, a lot of women today have been taught to disrespect their husbands, to be mildly, to argue with men. Uh, Esther did not go and argue with Haman at all. She let her Ish deal with that. She presented to her Ish in a way 
in a very humble, submissive way. Hey, he wants to kill my people. He wants to kill me. He hates us. And as we read four, you're going to see the king was actually fierce with Haman. But we see the wisdom that, uh, that Esther actually used. And again, that comes from training. So men and women alike, are we now, we here on this call, we are converting, changing, and some of us are converted, and we're different than what we used to be. But will we be thinking like Mordecai? <laughs> it would, would our behavior and conduct normally of brothers that we know in the world today, will we handle things um, in a wise manner, or will we just be loud and about it, about it all the time? Now, yes, Mordecai, he displayed faith. He displayed that as the most high, the creator tells you not to bow before false gods and these false ones of false powers. He's like, I'm not bound to nobody but the creator. So Mordecai showed us a strength in his faith in the most high. And that strength of faith in the most high should also, for each Elohim, have us to have that same type of faith and trust in the most high. Mordecai ain't go run and say, let's go get the guns and let's go bust. Let's go. That's not what, what his first thought process was. When he heard that decree, he knew they was outgunned. The talk tough and be a real, y'all know how we say it, say it. Oh, we real ends. So we're gonna fight till we die. Mordecai understood that was not a winning battle. I don't care how tough we are, we can't win this battle. The king is given a decree for us all to be killed. So now, how can I save my people? We got to go to the creator. We I have to pray to the creator. I have to put on my morning clothes of, of, of sackcloth to fast, to cry out to the creator. I also have to get Esther's attention. She needs, somebody needs to report back to her. Mordecai down here crying and stuff. Mordecai down here not eating. He down here dirty. He's got dirt all in his head. What's going on with Mordecai? So she sent someone to ask him, Mordecai, what's going on with you? And he sent message and word back. And now going back to what Akoti Rose said, he also said, so don't just sit in the big house and thinking this is all good. Don't even get in your mind, well, I'm good now. I'm a queen now. That don't apply to me. And I'm not even saying she was thinking like that. But before the excuse could even come, he says, look, be mindful. This may be the whole sole purpose that Yah placed you with the king was for this very day that you will save or deliver your people. So as Akoti Rose had already stated, she put her people over herself. She listened to the counsel of Mordecai. Y'all know how it is with uh, in families uh, and jobs. As long as the elder is the elder and you need the elder to provide for you, to care for you and things like that. Yeah, that submission game looked pretty good because you depended upon that elder. But now she doesn't have to depend on Mordecai. I'm the queen. I outrank you now because I'm the wife of the king. And who really are you? She never took on that mindset or that mannerism. She was still submissive to the man who raised her aright, as Akoti Rose had said, and as Iman Shoshana said. She applied the teachings that she got as she was being trained up. And then she also, going back to the relationship part, had a relationship with the Most High. And she said, what you're asking me to do, I will do, but my life is on the line. So what I need from you all is that y'all fast for three days also before I go and present myself before my each, because it's a custom in this land that if I go in there, I could be killed if I don't find favor in his sight. So y'all need to be praying to Yah on my behalf that I'm safe. While I go and ask the king and be praying that Yah gives us favor, that he will overturn this or we will be delivered. But they both, Mordecai and Esther, both knew the creator was going to really have to work on their behalf. So it was going to take fasting and prayer. This is giving us an example of, uh, 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 of, uh, of, uh, of a man of Elohim and a woman of Elohim. It's also showing us the humility and the submissiveness of a true daughter of Yah versus us when we're in our worldly mindset to the point where she could have been all right and just, hey, let them kill them. I ain't even got to really identify who I am. I'm going to be good. They don't even know because because I've already been instructed when I first got with him. Mordecai said, do not let them know who your people are. Do not let them know you a Hebrew. Don't even, don't even bring that up. But for this purpose is to the reason why Yah probably placed you in this position for this very moment right now that we can be delivered. 
So what I also want to look at is also the deliverance of Israel that has come through uh, through the text. As we go through the text, we see that the deliverance of Israel not only came through each Elohim, but the deliverance of Esha, uh, the deliverance of uh, of Israel also came through some Nashim or some wives or some virtuous women as well that were walking in Yah that had a relationship with the Creator. You know, so when you can go and you can read about Deborah, you can read about uh, like I said, we're reading about Esther. They were some that you know brought deliverance to Israel. Even um, uh, when you look at the one who killed the king and put the tent peg through his head, that was the woman that killed the king. And Deborah said it will not be a man, but it will be a woman, right? So I'm just showing that in the word of Elohim and the perfection of the word of Elohim, it shows us what the righteousness of a righteous woman looks like, and it shows us the righteousness and what a righteous man looks like. And so before we become husband and wives, or if we're already husband and wives, we need to work on being virtuous women, and we need to be working on being righteous, strong, each Elohim of men of Elohim, and start looking at the forefathers and mothers that were written in the text, all right? Move forward to uh, chapter, uh, well, before moving forward, I'm gonna go back to where we was at. So um, so again, when when uh, Haman went home, he's bragging about his, his, his promotion and all he has, and again, like I said, I just want to focus on the Zeresh because I open it out with uh, Proverbs chapter 14. It says, a, a wise woman will build her house, but a foolish woman will pretty much destroy it. So Zeresh, instead of giving her husband wise counsel, the way Esther used wise counsel when she went to her husband to ask for deliverance, she didn't go, oh, you need to deal with him. He's going to kill us. He want, he want to kill my people. She didn't put him in a bad way. She didn't get loud with him in front of uh, in front of." His powers to be as vast as he probably would have. She presented herself, as Iman Newkirk said, in her royal garment. She walked in there with that glow because you know she's already been fasting before him and presented herself very humbly before her each in submission. And then he basically came to her and accepted her and extended the uh, staff and said, listen, the scepter, hey, what do you want? To have the kingdom is yours. What do you want? What can I do for you, my love? So she used that wisdom. And that's what we need to learn. But Zeresh, Haman's wife, instead of telling him, yo, chill out, my Ish, once again, do not go there and mess up a party that you've been invited to. If the king's wife invited you alongside the king and the king's already esteemed you, this is not the time to go in there with your issue to deal with Mordecai to bring uh, any type of uproar or, or uh, uh, unjoyful activity to a party. That, that could have been something simple. She didn't give him that wise counsel because as Akoti Rose said, the position that she wanted and the things that was in her flesh also, she gave him um, some foolish counsel that was going to pretty much destroy their home. All right, moving forward to chapter five, Kanak, y'all. Five and one, uh, pick it up and read. And y'all, please help, help me and Maury Dawood out. Dawood, Maury Dawood, before I go forward, you have anything at this point before we go forward to the next uh, verses? Lower down, lower down. Okay, Mr. McCall, we're going to read some more. So remember, y'all are supposed to be presenting first, okay? Uh, Coach Rose, back us up again if nobody else. Stop. So uh, go ahead, Kanaki. I'll read for us, Adon. Uh, You mean chapter six, or we just read five, right? Oh, we just read five? Yeah, with... Uh... Yes, yes, uh, chapter six. All right, that's chapter six. On that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the Chronicles. And they were read before the king and it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Thana of T and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the king, what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this. Then said the king's servant that minister unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Oman was come to the out of the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, 
Behold, Amon standeth in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Amon came in. And the king said unto him, what shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Amon thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? And now and Amon answered the king, for the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of, of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Hamad, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as you have said, and do even so to Mordecai the Audi that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that you have spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him a horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, there shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to the house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh's wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said, his, then said his wise man and Zeresh's wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Aldine, before whom you begin to fall, you shall not prevail against him, but surely shall fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Continue on, Adon. That's the chapter seven. So the king and Amon came to banquet Esther the queen. And the king said again to Esther on the second day of the, at the banquet of wine, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be, and it shall be granted you. And what is your request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, if I found favor in your sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king of Hosphorus answered and said to Queen, the Esther the queen, who is he and where is he that doeth presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Amon. Then Amon was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Amon stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. And Amon was fallen upon the bed where on Esther was. Then said the king, will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who have spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Okay, let's pause it for a moment. So those two chapters, Mishmachai, what's something that we can bring out of those two chapters we just read? And if your thought goes back uh, to the other chapters, you can add those thoughts as well. Well, what are we getting out of uh, the two chapters that we just read? Adon Shai. So on page it looks like you hear me. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I was just focusing on uh chapter six. Um, well, Hamad, you know, he 
you know, he's um, you know, he has some, he said has uh, an agenda against um, Mordecai. But you know, the king he has favor of Mordecai in this uh, chapter, and it seems like I was kind of thinking, you know, humility is kind of like bulletproof, you know. Um, because if someone is you know showing humility, you know, someone who is wicked or trying to you know they'll try to do everything to try to get that person to you know, put themselves in a negative light. But you see Mordecai, you know, he's, you know, just remaining calm in this situation. And, you know, the king finds a good report regarding him. And, you know, he finds favor of the king. And then, you know, the previous chapters, you know, uh, there were, uh, Haman was, uh, you know, against them. I mean, like we talked about before, you know, he's just in a, someone in a state of, you know, humility. And, you know, so like how he's trying to do everything to try, you know, to destroy him, to get rid of him, but it's not working. And that's something I was like thinking about this week, you know, just the aspect of, you know, humility. You know, uh, if you have someone that's saying, I'm going to get this person, I'm going to destroy him, I'm going to get him, the other person is just calm. Uh, there's really not that much they can do, you know. I yield. How are y'all doing? I like that term, uh, humility is bulletproof. You know, uh, humility in y'all, like you said, is a form of being bulletproof. Uh, that, that was a good statement, Adon. Uh, thank you for what you share. Uh, Don Uziel. Shalom, Maury. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to say um, pretty much what Shah said and what you said. Um, when you're on the most high side, uh, it doesn't matter um, who is against you. It may look like you're going to fail or you're going to um, fall upon a sword. But sometimes, well, well, if you stay in righteousness, uh, the sword that was prepared for you to fall upon, the person that prepared it, the most high will work it out to the point where they fall upon their own sword. I yield. Hallelujah. And uh, there's a scripture to support what you're saying about when the enemy is digging a ditch for you, if you're in righteousness, then they will fall into their own ditch. So as you said, if they dig in, if they come in at you with a sword, the most high will make them fall upon their own sword if we remain in righteousness. So um uh told our dome because you're tying in the righteousness of Mordecai, the humility of Mordecai, and how the most whatever weapon was formed against him, it did not prosper. So told our told our dome. Uh Koti Rose. Um, so for me, it was like, man, talk about making a table for you in front of your enemies. Um, in this case, I feel like the Most High made the enemy prepare the table and serve him at the table. Even like, and then the first thing that stood out to me from chapter six was how the Most High caused um, the king to be remembered or to remember what Mordecai did for him. And because Mordecai was in the right place at the right time, staying on assignment, you know, inquiring about Queen Esther before she became queen is how he was privy to the information that saved the king's life, which later on would be what would give him favor with the king. And even the king in his wisdom, he asked Haman, what should a person do? What should I do for the person who practically saved my life? And again, Haman is so prideful and so foolish, automatically he thought the king was talking about himself. And the Most High used him to elevate Mordecai in the way that he wanted to be elevated. And, you know, like everyone else already said, the same dish that he prepared for Mordecai, he ended up falling in it. So what, what I got from that is just one, staying on assignment. You know, a lot of times we think things should have happened sooner or at our time, but it is always in the Most High's timing when he chooses to remember us. And then, you know, just like everyone already said, remaining in righteousness. And I love Mordecai's boldness. Every day he kept going to the same place and he never bowed down. So he was bold in his faith and standing for the most high. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Koti, you said uh, you said a mouthful. Um, she said, stand focused and stand on assignment. And when the most high remembers us in his time, when he remembers us, we just need to stay the course and stay on assignment. Um, and King Dawid, uh, Dawood, you would always see that it said he patiently waited on Yah. So for uh, so for each Elohim or virtuous woman, a man of Elohim or virtuous woman, if we are trained up in his word, one thing that you also stated, uh, she actually referenced back to Psalms, the 23rd chapter. So you know Mordecai now knows certain things about the Most High. So 
they're trusted in the most high. And, you know, so whatever he's going through, he remained faithful to the most high. And as she said, you know, talking about preparing a table before him in the presence of his enemies, like Haman pretty much had to set Mordecai's table. You know what I'm saying? So he's Mordecai's fully being anointed, being paraded around. And that's all through Yah. And so scriptures like that, when we go through our hardships, when someone is coming against us, we need to remember when they came against our forefathers. It, they came against them way worse than what they come against us today. And so the way they trusted, the way they were each Elohim, men of Elohim or uh, virtuous women, they still stood in adversity because they was raised up in Yah and, and, and it shows. And so again, the whole thing is, if we go back and look at what they did, are we doing the same things? Are we patterning our lives after the righteous forefathers and mothers of old and, and how to actually walk in the power of Yah? This is how we do. We have to learn how to do it. And so uh, Toda, Toda, Koti, um, and she touched on another point I'm going to go into in just a moment. I want to leave the floor open. So uh, uh, Ima Shoshana. Praise Yah. Um, uh, Koti Rose, you, you and I are on the same wavelength here. <laughs> um, how the father brought to mind Mordecai before the king. And doing that, it helped him to realize this man is a very important in my life because he saved my life. So he's forefront in his mind now. So things that take place after that, it helps the king to make a strong decision, a wise decision because Mordecai actually saved his life. And the other thing was that um, how Hamilton was so puffed up. I mean, this man, he must have been flying, floating, because he was so puffed up, it didn't make no sense. So why would you think that the king want to honor you? What have you done that the king want to honor you? Or he's already given you a, a seat above all the princes in the kingdom. So what else do you think he wants to give you? I mean, he's so puffed up, it's ridiculous. So in that, he's thinking, oh, yeah, he wants to elevate me some more. He wants to honor me some more. I, this is what I would want because he wanted so much recognition. He was so prideful, it's ridiculous. Self, Self-righteous. Oh, my goodness. He, he just, ugh. He was a mess. And, and after all that was done, when he had to do what he thought he was going to receive, how Mordecai went back to the gate. He went back to his position, humble still, back where he had to keep a watch, keep an ear open, and keep his eyes open for and, and discern what is going on, what's happening, what's to take place next. What do you have for me to do now, Father? What's my next move? He was ready, whereas Hammond was so shamed, he covered his face, covered his old head, <laughs> went crying like a little pouting little kid. Shameful. Oh, my goodness. And uh, while he was, in this is still in chapter six, while he was still pouting, that's when they come to get him to be brought before the, um, before the king and um, Esther. So here it is again. The father setting him up big time. Here it is. He's, he's already upset because of Mordecai. And, uh, and now he's being brought before the king and the queen. And here it is. Okay. Um, let me just bring this down a little bit. Let me just get myself together because I'm about to sit before the king and the queen tonight. I mean, he that high-minded again. He get there and the queen dropped the bomb on him. Oh, hallelujah. How the father works. I love it. <laughs> Praise y'all. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the excitement in which you presented it with Iman just gave me joy. But I want to tie uh, Iman's statement in with... Uh, Adon Uziel and uh, Adon Shashamar and Uz was saying about if you remain in uh, the in righteousness, you know, if you remain in the righteousness of the Most High, how uh, he make your enemy fall on the sword they have for you. And Ema and Shah was focusing on the humility of Mordecai. And so uh, I was telling the, uh, the, uh, the sisters to focus on the righteousness of Esther in comparison to uh, Vashti and Zeresh. But the brothers should be focusing on, like we say, Mordecai and, and Haman, you know, or Haman, you know, like he was super puffed up. Like Ema said, he just wanted so much more. Like what more? Could, the king has already esteemed you highly and you're still wanting more. 
and it should also have showed the king something. Who's going to say, I want the king's royal garment? I want the ride on the king. Like, really, that's really saying you want my stuff. He's covetous, you know, so he's a very dangerous person. But the humility of, of, of Mordecai in comparison to the puff upness and the uh, 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 the haughtiness of, of, of Haman is ridiculous. As Ima said, like the, the, the nerve of this guy. So as Shashma was saying, humility is bulletproof and it's showing us right here in the text. No, Ima Audra, I ain't take your statement, Ima. Still make your statement, Ima. I'm about to hush. I'm, I'm quiet right now. Ima Audra, you're next. And then I'm going to go back to you. This is Rose. I know Ima to put your hand on. What you have for us, Ima? We want to hear you. You just stated what I wanted to say, and Ima Shoshona. Um, I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know what part <laughs> you was going to say. So I want to hear from you, Ima. Come on. Okay. Uh, shalom, first of all. Um, I just want to say that Haman or Haman showed no humility at all. He was very prideful and he thought highly of himself. And there's a scripture that, that think too highly of ourselves. And he covered it and you already covered it. He covered the king's position because who would ask to wear the royal apparel that the king wears to ride his horse and then have his crown placed on his head but someone who covered the king's position. So that was the statement I wanted to make. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told our Ima, I told our Ima. Uh, uh, Akoti Rose, I'm going to get you after Ima Newkirk, and I'm going to come at you, Akoti Rose. Ima Newkirk, uh, the floor is yours. I, I just want to say, because of her humbleness, her living, uh, her upbringing, and her, uh, her uh, observing how she served the Most High, that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And that's what we got to remember. If we as women live righteous before the most high, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda, Toda, Ima. Hallelujah. Akoti Rose. Yeah, one um I, I mentioned it already, but it I, I just found it interesting how as the most high was reminding the king of Mordecai at the exact moment. Haman came to tear Mordecai down. So I don't know. I just find that the timing very interesting, like how the most high and the enemy's timing collided and it basically worked out in Mordecai's favor. I yield. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and, and to that point, uh, uh, I'm going to yield the floor to Eliza for a moment, but just y'all be ready and pe be prepared for your answer. I'm about to pull a, a play out of Maury Dawu's playbook and ask y'all a question. So why do you think, and, and Eliza, remember your point, and you don't have to answer this first, uh, make your statement, but why do you think that at that moment did, did uh, the king uh, even go to the books and see that about Mordecai? Why do you think that took place? Eliza, the floor is now yours for the comment you was gonna make. Uh, shalom, shalom, I don't... <laughs> It's my love. Your voice got deep. It's my E. But it's so, it's so, it's the same. I want to say it's a, it's a total lesson. Um, um, I'm a hundred percent according with Ima Shoshana about humble. You know, and uh, everything I can see about what we read so far is about, uh, you know, recognize uh, what is the position. And uh, as Isha, as, uh, as a man, you know, uh, when, when you want to be uh, do evil things, uh, your position uh, is uh, your influence is always to do that, you know, uh, create something envy and things like that, like uh, as, as we've been reading. And the other thing is uh, when, when you do, when you go to the Esther uh, Hadassah um, position. You can see how she prepared, you know, everything to go offend or go uh, over what what his each uh, rules or regulation, not of his kingdom, because uh, any position uh, you can or destroy a nation or build a nation. So it's it's important to recognize uh, uh, a humble position and, and recognize what is position of other peoples, you know. Because that's uh, that's what the Most High uh, established from the beginning. Um, Ish is Ish, uh, Isha is Isha. It doesn't mean Queen or King. 
So I'm talking about marriage, marriage uh, situation because uh, by by the king, uh, he he don't see her as a queen. He see her as a wife, you know. So of course, on the wife rules, you have or the or the husband, uh, you have authority. But she never did anything that passed the authority of his each or her each, her each. So, but anything is uh, even when when she went into his presence, he asked or she asked him to receive his favor. So, and and it's it's something we never we can never forget. Forgive. It's, it's about humble. What is my position? We need to recognize what is my position. Because the soon we forget what is my position in here, in this era, I forget what is my position in front of the Most High. Because He established everything from the beginning. That's what I want to say. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, I love it. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Adon, uh, you said a, a whole lot. Um, going all the way back to the context of the very beginning of the story, going into uh, Vashti, uh, Vashti and how she denied him. And now you're going into uh, uh, currently where we are. But the whole thing has been that, uh, that Esther has always been in a submissive role. And as you stated, she never did anything to bring shame to the king. She never went against his authority, his rules. And like you said, she came in, if I find favor in your sight. So her wording, her presentation, yeah. her behavior, all that, that was a, a very key point, um, Adon. Yeah, that's something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's what I say. Uh, he, he, uh, sometimes when we forget what is our position, we can destroy a nation or build. So that's 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 the point. So that, that's all I'm saying. So. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that's a, a, a key point. Um, and that's why his leadership told him, to, uh, hey, get rid of her and get somebody else. Because if not, the whole, like you said, that's what they pretty much said, like the whole nation would be messed up because then all the women will be acting like she act if she does that to you. But, uh, and I like how you also said that um, he was not just looking at her as a queen. That's my wife, that's my Isha. So forget a title for right now, that's my Isha. What do you want, my love? So I like the way you brought all that together because that's how it's supposed to be from a husband to a wife. He's not even looking at, if she's in my presence right now, and I know she's never broken any rules, she really needs me for something. I want to hear what my wife wants and forget these rules about I can put her to death. What do you want? You know what I'm saying? My love, not in a rude way, like, hey, he stuck his stuff out and he, he brought everything to a halt for the woman that he loved, which also shows, um, even from the king's perspective, to the men. There is times when uh, we will be handling business and you know uh, we may not be able to uh, uh, speak with our wives a certain way or do certain things they may desire at a time, but do we do we do need to also understand that's my wife and if my wife is now presenting herself at a time when I know she normally knows not to interrupt I need to hear what's up, there, there's something, I need to be attentive to my wife and that's something in the walk that a lot of us have to work on um, because sometimes we can um, our wives can go lacking sometimes while we're trying to do the duties of the most high or we're trying to do work and our jobs and things like that. And sometimes your wife may really need, need your ear, may need to really run something by you. So um, Toda, I told her, uh, Rabat Dome, um, for what you uh, just brought out, Aki, uh, uh, profound. Um, Ima uh, Shoshana, and then uh, Maury, uh, it's on you right after Ima Shoshana. Uh, I was um, raising my hand to the question you asked. Uh, would you repeat the question again, please? So uh, Akoti Rose was going, going to a highlighted point that I had that I was going to um, bring a question out. So I said, I'm taking a page out of Maury Dawood's playbook and I want to get you thinking for a moment. Why do you believe, because Akoti Rose said it was amazing how right at the time and all this is about to take place that the king reads and looks in the records and see that Mordecai was his deliverer or savior uh, when people meant him harm. Why do you think at, the, uh, at this particular time he had that sleepless night, which had him up reading books and seeing Mordecai's name. Why do you feel like that happened? Is is, is the question that um that I asked. So, um, if you want to think on email, you ready to answer it now? Or uh, let oh, that was that was Yah. That okay. was Yah putting things in place. 
And, and, and that is true. So we all know that it's Yah. So that is absolutely true. But what? But why do you believe it was Yah? Because of the records that he read, the, the things uh, he could have uh, had anything happen that night because he was sleeping. He could have had them bring him something to drink. He could have had them bring anything else, but he had them bring in the ledger, the records. Right, right. That's true. So that's all written right there for us to see. But this night he could not sleep. Right. Because and it was leading up to the point where Mordecai wanted, uh, I mean, Hammond wanted Mordecai to be hung on the gallows. Came, came. So, so you, 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 you dancing around, Ima. So you, you're right. It's, <laughs> it's right here. And we always know that it's Yah. And before we go further in the question, so y'all, I know everybody else probably got your hand ready for the question. Maury Dawood, don't answer that question. Uh, I'm going to go to Maury Dawood because he had his hand up. He was after Ima, and I believe y'all got your hands not ready for the question. So Maury Dawood, what are you going to bring out mm -hmm. first, Adon? And Ima Shoshana, we're going to come right back to the question. Just well, I'm going to yield. Uh -huh. I'm going to yield for these three hands right here um, um, so they can answer the question since we're actually getting some participation. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, Akoti Road. So one thing that came to mind, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm probably way off, is um, just like we were reading, um, I, I believe it was on Shabbat, and we were talking about how, um, you know, Satan went before the Most High and was like, oh, I want to tempt your people. And the Most High say, have you considered my servant so-and-so? I don't know why. I feel like that moment was because Mordecai, I mean, Haman's heart was already basically owned by the enemy, the Most High just used that opportunity to elevate Mordecai because that was his appointed time to elevate Mordecai. I yield. Hallelujah. I like how you tied that in from the Shabbat, uh, Akoti. Uh, that gives me uh, gives me uh, confirmation that somebody's actually uh, uh, listening. So praise y'all, praise y'all, praise take it in, praise y'all. Uh, Adon Shah Shamar. James, I was thinking about uh, Bereshit. Um, you know, when uh, Sarah was taken and then, you know, the Most High came to him in a dream and said, you know, the woman that you have is another man's wife, you know. So he came to, I believe it was by night. Uh, I just saw that connection, you know, the Most High, you know, um, you know, protecting his people. Um, you know, that's, that was my connection, I yield. Okay, told I saw the Most High protecting his people, which we know the Most High will do, but told I don't uh, for that and for you going and pulling those precepts. Um, who's hand up? Uh, Adon Uzel. Okay. Uh, I say, um, like uh, a coach you wrote says, um, Haman's heart was already made. Uh, it's set on people. So I believe with, you know, the most I allow um, the king to have a sweet this night to read those books, to see Mordecai's name and to uh, bring it back to his remembrance. So I would say give him a sign to uh, be tentative or to yield to his voice when, you know, he spoke to the king about Hamar. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. So as, as Pharaoh's heart was hardened, Adon U saying uh, Haman's heart was hardened. And so the most high placed it upon the king's heart, Aleb, to read that so that he would be more favorable to Mordecai and be able to see the wickedness of my uh, uh, good bringer dome. All right, Ima Shoshana. Praise Yah, it was the prayer and the fasting that brought this about. Mordecai praying for his people, talking to the father to bring justice to his people. It was the prayer that brought about the sleepless night. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you know I said I really don't ask trick questions but there is, uh, when we're answering this, uh, there everything everyone said is right because I want to um, go to the, the messenger for a moment. So sorry, yourself, Ben Lasimba posted uh, a moment ago, but if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who distress you, Shemot uh, Exodus 23 and 22. So in Yah's word, there's already promises of Yah's power written. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Um, your rod staff, they comfort me. If you live righteous, and as Shashmar said, the humility, 
we have the faith in Yah, then there's a ton of scripture that tells us Yah's going to do this for us. But there are things that we must do. We must be righteous. We must be humble. We must be faithful. But also when we're, when we're trying to bring this word to people's sight, let them see why we do what we do as Hebrews. And what we talk about, the training and the upbringing, and make it simple according to what it says right here in the text we're at. They did something. They what? They were praying and fasting, and they put a timeline. So they did not omit any of the other parts. They were being righteous. They were trusting in Yah, but then they also gave of themselves. They fasted and they prayed. They prepped themselves to go into the presence of the Most High, and they also gave up something for the power of the Most High to come into the situation. And so as Coach Rose said, it's kind of amazing how right the day before this goes on, now all of a sudden the, the king can't sleep and want to read some, <laughs> some ledger late night. I mean, come on, late night ledger? You know, I mean, and, and, and then he now realizes, okay, Mordecai is the one who actually saved me. Probably didn't even really remember that information or even know exactly how all that came to be. But he's looking at the ledger like, oh, Mordecai did this? That's Yah. So it goes, and I like what our coach Rose said, we're also seeing in the text how to strengthen and build our evil now, our faith, because we see how Yah works. We see how the adversary works. We see how our faith works. We see how our lack of faith works against us. And so that's why I'm saying right here at the text for each Elohim or a virtuous woman, we see that they fasted and prayed. They were righteous. They were trusted in, in the most high and they had a relationship with the Most High. So, told out to all of you for your answers, but the answer uh, 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 that everyone also add to your knowledge uh, that Shemot that uh, saw yourself left, but if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who distress you. Shemot uh, Exodus 23 and 22. You know, and you mix that faith with fasting and prayer and the Most High shows up uh, 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 um, big style, powerful, powerful for us if we if we apply all the teachings that he has for us through our forefathers and mothers. All right, uh, 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 Adon, Dahoud, uh, hey, you said, hey, we get some participation, so you ain't want to mess that up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. the floor is yours, Okay, okay, okay. okay. hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, for everyone who was um, um, contributed tonight, uh, and this is um, another great lesson, Adon. Um, something that I think we haven't touched on yet, um, which the faith, the fasting and the prayer um, is something that I believe that we can all do in the uh, comfort of our homes, you know, in the comfort of uh, the locations that we go. But I don't think that we see the um, overcoming of fear that has to um, happen in these type of situations. Um, one with Mordecai, right? He's 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 dealing with um, uh, Haman, and he's dealing with that whole group, right? And he has to stand uh, before them, literally, and and not bow, and actually stand on his principles. And then you have uh, so that's on the um, um, Anashim side or, or or the men side. And then to me, even stronger than that would be um, Hadassah, and her having to understanding that she could be killed understanding that she could lose her position, um, understanding all of that. She had to overcome all that fear to even go into the chambers in order to deal with that, right? So, so many times we under we understand the faith, we understand the fasting, we understand the prayer, but are you able to stand in the midst of what you fear, right? Um, which I was looking at before we kind of came on, the word um, um, pakad. Right, so that's pay cat dollar, right? So that is pay, or um, what is in your presence is preventing you from the access, right? So whatever you see that you fear that you don't go up against is going to prevent you from the access of elevation, right? So Hadassah, because she did what she did, then then she was elevated, and based on her elevation, all of Israel was elevated. So are you able, right, to overcome your fears in every situation, whether that's on a job, whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in whatever it may be, right? The most high tests you and tests your ability to 
overcome your fears. You see how forefathers Abraham and his test, those were fears. My wife is taken. Or my nephew taken. So now I got to go fight, fight kings for him. That's fear. The fear of giving up your, your only son that you've been waiting 25 years for. That's, that's fear. Losing your job because you don't want to take a vaccine. That's, that's a fear that our people have. Now, are you able to overcome it or, or are you going to um, succumb to it? It's likely, though. That's the, that, is, that is the difference between, um, that's the difference between pretending to, now, now that you said that, I don't want to keep going, but um, uh, that's the difference between someone who is uh, comfortable in their, in their place and someone who continues to strive after the creative. Because there are going to be things in your life that you're going to have to get past. Fears, mostly. That is the thing that stops us most. Fear brings on doubt. All of these things, uh, all of these things are based on fear. You sin because of fear. So the the the, the fear aspect of 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 this walk, we are going to have to overcome. And yes, it's going to be prayer. Yes, it's going to be fasting. Yes, it's going to be you know um, um, your brothers and your sisters. But in uh, and I'm end on this. There are two types of fear. Some people, and when you talk about fear, some people are feeling failure. But then there are some of us who fear success. Most people fear failure. Well, I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. You know, so 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 then they have doubt and that stops them. But then some of us fear success because if you succeed, now there is an expectation for you. That's why a lot of Yisrael. We don't really want to do all that the creator said that we should do, because if we do it now, there's an expectation for perfection. There's an expectation for rising above, rising above what everyone will think of you, being different. So I, that's, 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 that's pretty much what what I have family is that don't let fear prevent you from being the fullest version of who y'all created you to be. Because at the end of the day, when you, when you break it down to is, you know, basic foundation, that's breaking Torah, your own Torah, the Torah that the creator gave you to fulfill. When you fear to step into that realm, you are rebelling against his will for your life because of fear. So I, I love y'all. The most high, um, I just want to read one script real quick and then um, I'm going a, I'm to a hand it back over. I believe everyone knows this or they should know it. Um, Psalms 27. Verse one says the Psalm of Dawid, Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That fear is reverence. Whom shall I, whom shall I respect to the point where they prevent me from doing what I'm supposed to do? Yahuwah is the strength of my life. Who, of whom shall I be afraid? If Yah is my strength, what shall stop me from going through the door to elevation? Most I said, do not fear. So Mr. Pekai, just stand up and go into that realm that you once feared, understanding that Yah is with you. He is your strength and he is not going to leave you. And those that trust in him shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, and uh, as he brought out, uh, Mr. Pekai, uh, as we've been bringing out, about Abraham and some of our forefathers. And we were talking about the flesh side. So he did bring a highlight, like 
that was powerful for Mordecai to really stand. And it was even more powerful for Hadassah Esther to be willing to do what she had to do facing those fears and still walking through. And so a lot of times, as he was saying, we will talk about the fasting, we will talk about the praying, but when it comes to the actual fear side of us actually seeing the blessings of the Most High, do we fast and pray and still let fear overtake us because we don't fully trust as they did? And that's something that we have to learn to work on. You know, we have to learn to work on. That's also a part of fulfilling it. And that's what this text shows us. What, what they, what, if you believe the word and they trusted in the word, they fully stood regardless of what could have happened, you know? And so when you're trying to put that into context today and what it looks like in your life, you know, uh, it, sometimes, like I said, things are scary. And, you know, when we let the doubt consume us, you know, the doubt or uh, should I say the fear consume us, uh, we don't keep pushing forward to the mark as we've seen um, both Mordecai and Hadassah give us an example here of actually pushing towards that mark and kept pushing forward even when faced with death. So uh, total for that, uh, for that highlight because that's the level that we're trying to grow to to not allowing the fear consume us to the point that the power of Yah was just ready to work in our life and we got scared to uh, fully trust in Yah to deliver us. So total, total for that, More. All right, Mishbaka, um, it's already 9.55, so I won't actually go any further, but I do want to just highlight also in closing, um, as Abadah was saying, she never uh, disrespected the king. She never broke his rules. And also what Iman Newkirk was bringing out earlier, how she presented herself before him. She put on her royal, uh, her royal garment, you know, that way she presented herself. And then the wisdom that she used, um, if you if, if you look back at it, she still never told the king immediately. He, he they having a banquet. She's whining and dining him. He, he's having a good time, and you know he's still like you still ain't tell me what you want yet. You know, so she didn't even rush to get into uh, what she wanted to ask him about. She treated him royal. She uh, prepared a banquet. She did a whole lot of things to prepare his mind to be ready to receive her words. So. She was patient, she was kind, she was loving, she was faithful, and yeah, you know, so with that, you know, um, this is a good uh, a good read just to show us um, what a Ish Elohim and a virtuous woman actually looks like. And I'm gonna um, go back to the, uh, before I close out and open the floor to everyone else, um, may the most high um, heal uh, sorry yourself, he said his head is hurting. But he posted something. He said he's, he don't want to speak um, due to the headache. So I'm going to read what he posted. Um, so Psalms 20. Oh, that was Psalms 27. What's more, he just read. I have a major headache. Okay. So he said he wanted to post through text. So he posted Genesis chapter 3, 8 through 10. I'm going to read it. It says, and they heard a voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yah Elohim among the trees of the garden. And Yah Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Don't, don't hide yourself in the trees, family. We see from the beginning that fear separates you from the life in Yah. Uh, hallelujah. Um, he says, and my people upon whom my name is called shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then I shall hear from the Shemayim or heavens and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes are open and my ears attentive to prayer uh, of this place. Uh, the uh, uh, Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 15. And he said, that's in conjunction with Psalms 27. Um, sorry, we hope you feel better. Um, like I said, I understand how to have a bad headache and I want to speak, but told up for you sharing your words via messenger um uh, uh for the children of Yah. So praise Yah. All right, Mish Bakal, before we uh close out, does anyone else have anything before we get ready to close? All right. Well Mish I definitely enjoyed the study tonight and thank you for so much participation. Um my Koti Rose you was on fire tonight. I'll pray to the most high. Um, and tell uh, Dimitri, I said, Shalom, Shalom. He gave me joy to hear his voice on Shabbat. So uh, may the Most High bless your household and everyone's household that's online tonight. 
Um, and to the Akim, thank y'all for y'all participation as well. And emotes and everyone that tuned in tonight, Toda, Toda. So at this time, I'm going to open the floor if one of the Akim um, wouldn't mind doing a uh, closing tefillah. Shlika, Shlika, let's do something different tonight. We fought, we're talking about the prayers and everything. Uh, uh, I won't put anyone on Front Street. And I don't want y'all to race a fight for it, but if one of the uh, one of the, uh, the imams, if y'all would do a closing Teflon for the night. Okay, Imam Shoshan, I see your hand up. Okay. And I know you did that little pause. I know you was pausing, Imam, even though that's not a live face. I seen your smile on the picture that you, you're like, I'm going to pause for a moment. Okay, Imam Shoshan, if you can do the closing Teflon. <laughs> For us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your mic is muted, Imam, if you're praying. Um, unmute your mic. Oh, you want me to pray now? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Oh, I thought you was waiting for some comments. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And you were right. I was chuckling. I was smiling because I was waiting for one of the other Imams. <laughs> but praise y'all. Hallelujah. If all hearts and minds are focused on our Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. All praise, honor, and esteem to you, Father, for this lesson tonight to give us a visual and to have our ears hear and see how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as your children. We know that some of us are walking in righteousness and humbleness, but there's things that we're lacking in also, Father, but help us to line up with all your laws and your commandments and your right rulings. Help us to line up in your walking in the Ruach as you are in the Ruach, knowing that our bodies, this flesh houses our Ruach, but greater is you, are you in us than our bodies and the things that are in this world, Father, that our bodies are connected to because we're made from the dirt, the earth itself, Father. But you filled us with your Ruach HaKodesh. You filled us with your Ruach HaKodesh. Help us to continue to study these words and to hear them and apply them to our lives and that we walk in righteousness and that we walk in the Ruach HaKodesh and that we remember the armor that you've given us to operate in, to use, to fight with, knowing that our battles are not physical, but they are spiritual because we are spiritual beings. Keep us in mind of that, Father showing us through your word how our ancestors conducted themselves once they realized the truth and yielded to your laws and your commandments and to your Ruach HaKodesh. Continue to show us. Continue to use your mores, Father, your shepherds, to teach us the things that you would have us conscious of in each and every day that you bless us to fellowship together, forsaking not the fellowshipping of the saints together, that we come together and as iron sharpens iron, as we sharpen the countenance of each other. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this Knesset, Father, that edifies you and helps us to be edified in you, Father. Toda Reba. Help us to remember all things that we received today, Father. Help us to understand and know that you love us and you chastise them whom you love and you prune us to bear much more fruit. Help us not to be afraid, Father. We know that sudden fear comes upon us, but help us to get past that sudden fear in the name of Yahusha. We thank you. We bless you, we bless your name, we bless you, and we bless those who come in thy name. Totally by Abba, have your way always and continuously in our lives. In Yahushua's name I pray, hallelujah.
Aman and Aman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Toda Rabbi Iman for the Tefla. Toda for the prayer. Toda, Toda. Mishpaka, may the Most High watch over, bless and protect each and every one of you. May he give you shalom. Uh, we definitely enjoyed it, Mishpaka. Thank you for so much participation. Um, thank you, Iman, for the closing Tefla. So at this time, Mishpaka, I'm going to say shalom, shalom. Uh, get you some rest and may the Most High watch over, bless and protect each and every one of you. Um, shalom, shalom, Mishpaka. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.